Welcome to the labyrinth. My guest today is Tarun Pradhan. He is a spiritual seeker and a writer. He is sort of a nomad. He doesn't stick to one particular job or one specific field. I'll be honest with you. I don't know that much about him, but a few months ago I came across his blog in which I read his article titled Secrets of Making Money. It was a very long but articulate and uh, insightful article about life work and making money in his blog and in his videos he talks about spirituality uh, consciousness uh, the state of being nirvana advaita etc so i hope you find this podcast uh, useful and without further delay let's begin Arun ji welcome to the labyrinth thank you very much for inviting me thank my you. pleasure so uh, tell me a little bit about yourself when did you start your uh, spiritual journey a very common question and the answer is always as soon as i was born oh. i was born with this tendency to seek i had no other interest actually just to find answers to the questions and uh, the whole life that happened in the background of this seeking actually so as far as i can remember i was always seeking but i did not know the uh, meaning of spirituality or even science or anything it was just curiosity that's all so you were seeking you started seeking at a very young age you were, you are a seeker uh, does uh, taking on the spiritual path and becoming a seeker does it make life more difficult or does it make it more easy it is slightly difficult in the beginning because when you don't know the answers there is struggle you go to this person you go you read that book you join this ashram that guru it is like extra work initially uh, in addition to your daily struggle of survival there is extra work but as soon as you know something as soon as you reach somewhere then the whole life is much more easier it is much it is much more simpler than uh, a life of a common man okay it is much more happier actually Okay. so there is a duration where you are seeking but you are not finding anything that part is difficult and as soon as you get a guru who holds your hand from then onwards it becomes very easy so when you just started your spiritual journey when you just became a seeker initially you were not finding anything but then you found something that made your life easier what is that you found the answers to basic questions like uh, self knowledge knowledge of the world knowledge of this existence knowledge about our lives deaths all these things so uh, the uh, it cannot be said that i found something you can only say that you lost your beliefs you lost oh. your candy you lost your ignorance there is nothing to be found actually mm-hmm. that which is the truth is already here oh. it cannot be found you can simply lose your ignorance mm. so spirituality is mostly subtractive we don't gain anything here and oh. finally we found that it was always there all the answers were always there and uh, there is nothing to gain actually it is all whole and complete already okay so when you say you lose uh, what okay you lost your illusions you lost uh, i'm assuming you lost desire to be to to fit in society uh but uh, 
how did people around you react to you maybe your parents maybe your friends relatives uh, most of them they did not come to know but uh, the usual reaction is he is different or he is crazy or uh, there is some uh, problem in his life he stays away from the crowd he stays away from the family and so on you see like all the characteristics of a seeker introvert and uh, not worldly very very you can say simple person so uh, but uh, everything was going inside actually the, there was peace outside but inside there was uh, a lot of you can say disturbance cyclonic <laughs> activity inside of seeking so a lot of reading a lot of listening a lot of visiting places and so on and the reaction of the people was uh, as usual you see that he is a misfit does not fit so like you said i lost the interest in uh, fitting with the society something like this but it was already there okay <laughs> by default i had no interest at all in our usual uh social things but that does not mean that i was totally outside the society it is not possible isn't it yes. you need to get the education you need to get the job then you need to somehow manage one leg in the society and other leg in the spirituality it's like always like a balance so that becomes hard because when you cross a lake you have to sit in one boat if you put one leg in one boat one more leg in one boat you may fall how do you find this balancing act yeah i fell many times <laughs> <laughs> and finally you choose one boat isn't it finally you choose one boat then i chose my boat and the other boat was gone so no more struggle now we do the minimum to uh, remain in the world but we, re we remain outside the world okay so uh, how how can we survive in this world at the same time be authentic and the trick is minimalism you minimize your needs you know instead of 20 shirts you take only one shirt instead of uh, uh, five pairs of shoes manage with one and instead of uh, a very lavish um house you manage with a small one and that is how uh, we can spare a lot of time for our seeking or the practice if you are doing any practice and uh, somehow carry on but uh, in my case Uh, it is absolutely comfortable i mean the still the material thing was well taken care of i did not do that mistake of becoming a sanyasi or a, <laughs> you see monk or something because their lives are very difficult these days especially they need to beg or they need to survive on donation and so on that, that is not recommended actually what is recommended is to set up your survival initially and then you are free to do whatever you want to do okay but mm. what if a man wants to start his own family if he wants to get married and have kids is it possible for him to be a seeker or will it become more difficult because starting a family requires some materialistic aspirations yes so it is possible yes it is possible many of my seekers my students my friends even my gurus they are family people no problem at all but yes as you said it will become a little bit difficult there will be extra responsibility on you like your child wants to do the homework or your wife wants to do the shopping now you cannot attend the satsang now you cannot even uh, visit some place because you you have to do a job and but then you need to choose a path which is 
good for a householder there are paths spiritual paths that are made uh, for the householder if you choose that path then it is not that difficult the spiritual thing like i said is difficult when you don't have any guidance that is what is the condition of most of the people so they are struggling and they think that the family is a um, obstacle on their path but it's not like this you get a good guidance you get a good guru and everything will be taken care of family is not a problem and the family members can uh, cause a little bit of trouble because these things are not considered normal in our society even in india <laughs> do not like the spiritual people so you need to keep your practice secret or you need to have a understanding family like you marry somebody who is already in the spirituality and that will make your problems easy to handle uh, uh what is the concept of advaita in your blogs i see many articles about advaita and non duality and duality what are these concepts yes it is a very very ancient philosophy uh, which is derived out of uh, the vedas and upanishads and its main uh, claim is because it's a philosophy its claim is that the existence is one there there is no division of any kind in the existence so normally we make a division of the material world and the immaterial person or whatever you want to call it hmm? but the advaita says that there is no such thing there is only one one existence and it is experiencing itself in various forms and these forms are simply illusions so one thing one reality which is both the dream and the dreamer in simple words you can say okay this is the main claim of this uh, non dual philosophy so not two not many just one okay so the dream and the dreamer are the same same phenomenon and yes. there is no uh, division at all uh, now in my mind i i have not uh, i'm not a very spiritual person i have uh, uh, you know different thoughts in my head to some good thoughts some bad thoughts i have a very strong ego also i can i will admit it i have unnecessary desires i have unnecessary aspirations which can sometimes lead to stress or anxiety and uh, with with so many thoughts in my head how can we navigate you know how can we move ahead in our life uh, to reach uh, to reach a, uh, to reach some kind of uh, peace or bliss it is very easy you need to set up a spiritual goal then you need to find a path which can give you that goal then you find need to find somebody who has already gone on that path that will be your teacher that will be your guru and simply follow the instructions of your guru and you will reach your goal i think that was your question yes. how to get into spirituality like this yes yes yeah. always starts with a goal what do you want for example if you have any spiritual goal right now we can discuss that sure uh, i think my spiritual goal it's more of a mental goal than a spiritual goal uh, i now you know i uh, i'm 29 now uh, many a times when i wake up in the morning i think uh, i should have done this properly when i was 22 i should have done this when i'm 25 if i would have done this in my few years ago i would have been in a better state now i would have lived a better life now why did i do like this why did i do like that so many uh, regrets and i sometimes curse my past self that he if he did this now i would have been in a better position these things are outside my control but i still uh, dwell over those thoughts 
so i mm. don't know how to uh, deal with my thoughts in a productive way yes so ultimately it is the seeking of happiness and peace isn't it yes ultimately you don't want these thoughts and you don't want those actions which which caused suffering isn't it that is the essence it can be anything it can be a uh, depression it can be anxiety like you said it can be bad decisions bad actions but ultimately this creature the human being wants happiness freedom bliss end of suffering isn't it we want to remain blissful we want to remain ecstatic healthy and we want to enjoy a good life that's all so that is the ultimate goal of anybody you see anybody not only you even me even anybody so uh, the your spiritual goal becomes end of suffering right yes any kind any kind of suffering and the end of suffering is uh, now will put you on a path and the path is to find happiness the path is to find bliss so there are many paths now which can do this and the most direct path that i have seen is the path of knowledge about which i keep talking about which i keep writing i keep uh, even teaching these things now so that is the most direct path which will take you to pure happiness pure bliss an absolute freedom in as soon as 3 hours okay 3 this is this is your course the path to knowledge <clears throat> path of knowledge path of oh. knowledge okay it will be called the gyan marg in sanskrit or hindi okay gyan marg or gyan yog now if somebody does not like this because this is very intellectual path this assumes that if truth is really there then it must be true right now right here also if something is true it must be present right now something cannot be true today and can be false gone tomorrow it's not possible and something cannot be true at one place and not true at other place that's not the absolute truth so it shows you the truth in front of your eyes directly <clears throat> that is why we call it the direct path or pathless path because there is no seeking here but if a person is not able to grasp this thing if a person is not able to find the ultimate bliss and happiness in 3 hours then there are different uh, approaches like the yogic path um, the best is the ashtanga yoga of patanjali so that is basically a path of discipline where you discipline your body and you discipline your mind and the actions are corrected your thoughts are corrected and you are established in your true nature this is the path of discipline the yogic path and if that is also not possible for some reason then there are energetic paths like mother nature has already given us all the uh, basic uh, instruments for achieving this kind of life absolutely blissful and peaceful life so if the guru can initiate that kind of process can initiate the purification process <clears throat> that will be called the path of energy and if that is also not suitable then there is the karma yoga or the path of action where you achieve a good life by doing proper actions correct action the right action path of right action and if that is also not possible for somebody then the final path is you know the last one is the path of devotion where you surrender to something which you think is bigger than me it can be your guru it can be any deity it can be uh, the uh, supreme power the god and then you live your life according to the instructions of your teacher in complete surrender and love so that is the last refuge but uh, 
it totally depends on the person what kind of the per, what kind of person that he is he or she is and what kind of path will be suitable to achieve this goal let us say your goal is end of suffering there can be other goals like liberation for example moksha mukti that can be another spiritual goal there can be other goals like uh, uh, service of all the creatures all human beings all the animals environment this can be a spiritual goal isn't it? because it's not about me so it is automatically spiritual and there can be more goals like achievement of powers siddhis supernatural abilities these fulfillment of desires and these are various spiritual goals and there are various paths to get them so what do you do you approach a master first to tell your goal i want this and the master will prescribe a path master will do a check up of you he will do a evaluation of you and he will check your mind he will check your body and what kind of path is suitable for you that is the job that re that recommendation will come from a guru so what happens initially is that the person the seeker does not know what is their goal like you are very clear about your goal but usually people don't know what they want uh, sometimes they think i want money i want prosperity i want good relationships i want social status but these are not spiritual goals you see these are material goals and the guru will just send you away and you know, work hard work honestly use your brain use your mind use your intelligence and you will achieve these goals but the spiritual goal requires a spiritual path it does not require hard work it does not require um, material abilities it requires spiritual abilities okay. and the guru can judge you the guru can uh, uh, recommend suitable paths to you now it is your job to walk on that path you know, try it try it whether it is producing any results or not if not then you can change the path and if the guru is also not producing any results change the guru no problem at all okay so this is how we start start with a goal always okay uh, and what about materialistic aspirations is it bad to have materialistic aspirations no it is not bad actually it is necessary yes. it is necessary to establish yourself comfortably in this world and that will depend on your current socio economic situation isn't it yes. your society and the economics there and the uh, how the life is conducted in your society it depends on country to country isn't it? it's it's kind of different in every country like if you go to um, uh, tibet for example life is different bhutan nepal these places are kind of you can say suitable for spiritual seeking mm -hmm. but if you go to a materialistic country where earning lots and lots of money is ne necessary just to eat two times mm -hmm. so uh, it totally depends on where you are and once you establish yourself in the, in materialistic terms then your mind is free to worry about you know uh, who am i what is my essence whether this world is illusion or not like they say initially you don't worry about these things these are higher questions isn't it initially you worry about do i have a shelter on my head am i getting my bread and butter properly am i feeding my family properly and uh, do i have a suitable car or basic needs phone internet electricity so you worry about these things first once you are comfortably settled then you worry about your spiritual goal not before that mm -hmm. some people take a shortcut you know they simply cut down their material life to zero mm -hmm. and they they will be called the sannyasis or monks or whatever you see but i think in this age that will be a very very difficult life mm -hmm. it is almost a torture 
for societies like this one, which are mostly materialistic nowadays. But you can always escape if you want. You can escape to a peaceful place, which is more uh, simpler, where this fight of survival is not there, where you can, you know, conveniently live in less. Otherwise, you need to find a balance. And once you are settled, uh, you can try the spiritual. Um, you know, achieving the spiritual goals after the material goals. If you ignore the material goal, your spiritual life will be very, very uh, difficult. Even the Guru will send you back to the world, you know. Mm. Go and do a job, he will say. Mm. You, you cannot beg on this path, he will say. Okay. You know, the path of beggars is something different. Mm. So, <laughs> totally depends on what uh, kind of um situation you are in if you are already prosperous mm. like your parents are earning nicely you are educated and you are in a good job or you are in a good business then you don't need to think too much you see mm. you are lucky you go you simply jump into spirituality but those who are kind of um struggling with poverty struggling with uh, um, there are desires of material kind, then they need to finish it first. Mm -hmm. They should finish it. Okay. And then it becomes meaningful to run after these non-worldly things, otherworldly things. Okay. Otherwise, you will not achieve this and you will not achieve that. Mm -hmm. Like you gave the example of the boats, no? Both the boats are going to sink. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. So spirituality is not for beggars. You have to have something first. Okay. And there are other desires also that a uh, lot of people have. Even seekers might have this. Uh, for example, something like lust or uh, desire for money, maybe even, uh, even luxury. Uh, how can we balance uh, having a spiritual uh, seeking journey at the same time these kind of desires? It is very easy, you see. It is very easy. Uh, you do, you satisfy those desires as much as you can. And once you are on the spiritual path, you will find that those desires will either drop away, they will look like childish, they will look like uh, um, stupid desires, you see. Uh, unnecessary. And if they don't drop off, then, you know, uh, you will get get the same thing, same kind of pleasure, same same kind of happiness through the spiritual path. It is possible. Okay. So whatever we are trying to achieve through money, through lust, okay. is happiness only, isn't it? Yes. Happiness only. Like if your uh, stomach is full, would you want to eat a full dinner? No. No. So the spirituality makes your uh, this unnecessary um, running after the external means of seeking happiness. It makes it redundant. You get what, what whatever you need from within. And so these desires will drop off. So my suggestion is to first finish, you know, even if you're seeking, if, even if you're practicing, you take care of your body needs, you know, body needs a lot of things. Take care of them, make partners, as many as you want. There's no, no rule here, you see. There is no, um, you can say, ethical limit in spirituality. The ethical limits are posed by the society because you need to adjust with the society. You need to live, live with these people. So there are uh, bounds there, but the spiritual field is limitless. Actually, in spirituality, you can get more than the material world. There are no limits here. And okay. pick, a, pick a suitable path and you can get all your material desire, worldly desire fulfilled in a minimum amount of time. Interesting. Interesting. I think... Uh... 
if i succeed in this i might live a very comfortable life then in my spiritual journey as well as in my materialistic journey another yes. another question is uh, like you earlier mentioned about the illusion reality might be illusion i think you had mentioned something like that and a lot of people who are in the spiritual journey also ask this question uh, is is the reality real or is it an illusion um the only reality is you that is what we say your essential being is the only reality and whatever appears in front of it is dream like you can say is an illusion or if you want to use the scientific words you can say it is a simulation it is not a material world there is no matter there is only a dream like appearance that's all there is the world the objects the people your body including your mind all the mental experiences they are all false they are made up okay. it is not that it is not there it is there it is there very much there like you can see right now something is there but it is not that which you assume it to be so the proper word is maya it is maya okay then we assume it to be something but it is not that mm. it is my own you can say dream mm. so if it's just a dream or a maya or a simulation then why take anything seriously yes you see once you know that it is an illusion you don't need to take anything seriously mm. but when you don't know it is an illusion when you don't know it is like a computer game of some kind mm. then you are trapped in the simulation you see you are in the ignorance and then you need to take it very seriously mm. take it very very seriously and overcome it transcend it you know get beyond it that is the whole job of a seeker isn't it the seeking is simply uh, cutting the bonds with the illusion getting out of the illusion is the seeking so once you realize that uh, this is the illusion then no more seeking no more trying to get out of it and there is acceptance it is an illusion and there is nothing more than illusion you see there is no separate reality other than the illusion okay. the only real thing is the you the your essence is the only real thing which is already present isn't it it's already present you don't need to find it anywhere you are the reality so you uh, then make friendship with the maya mm. instead of trying to you uh, know throw her out of your house mm. you marry the maya you make her your partner you know shiva has not <laughs> divorced the shakti shiva married the shakti isn't it Yes. that is a very good lesson that story is a very good teaching actually so the first stage is you don't know what you are and you don't know what is this thing which is appearing in front of you this world these people and you need to take it very seriously now to find you need to adjust in it and just like you said take care of the survival this creature wants to stay alive that it is its most intense desire is to stay alive so you make you know uh, arrangements for that proper arrangements minimal arrangements then you try to find out what is it once you find that it is an illusion once you are satisfied once you get the whole evidence for it you know whatever evidence you want you get it and uh, then you uh, surrender to the illusion we use this word surrender spiritual word which simply means be friends with the illusion enjoy the illusion mm. it is your play it is not your jail mm. it will look like a jail when you are suffering when you you are ignorant when you don't know what it is then it is pure suffering you know <laughs> and we don't want that you see that is why we seek mm. and like you said why take it seriously if you are ignorant please take it seriously <laughs> 
as soon as you get the knowledge as soon as you are convinced that this is an illusion you don't need to take it seriously but you take it lovingly you embrace the illusion because like we said no no to not to mm -hmm. the illusion is also okay as uh, this is a very interesting approach because many people once they realize or once they come to the conclusion that this is not real this is uh, maya or simulation many people go into depression they say then why try anything what is this life this life is meaningless they go into that nihilistic path i like your approach your approach is more like uh, it yes make friends with the you so what if it's an illusion make friends with the illusion i like this it is me only how can you discard myself my approach is very traditional you see my approach is many thousand years old and those who go into depression those who go into madness or those who start doing you know totally stupid actions calling it spirituality there is a problem with those people what is the problem they don't have a guru they don't have a path they don't have anybody to tell them how to handle the situation now you know some people will come to know that this is an illusion it is possible you know it is possible to know it in one week actually get hands on experience of it in one week if you have talent but you know they don't have the guidance to handle it that is their problem and they go into depression they start doing something stupid so uh, that's why i told the correct way the correct way is to have a goal find a path find a teacher and follow the instructions it is already done the whole spiritual thing is a solved problem you don't need to suffer because of it you see it is a solved problem there are big experts if i know this i am an ordinary person isn't it unknown person if i can know this anybody can know this what has happened is our society is full of ignorance mm -hmm. on that there is misinformation everywhere on that there are fake gurus there are frauds mm -hmm. and uh, people are generally not interested in spirituality mm -hmm. so it is very very uh, probable the probability of getting lost mm -hmm. is very high and i am seeing it every day actually i am one of the case actually i, I was a lost case <laughs> i have done all the mistakes that are possible in spirituality thanks to our setup the social setup totally ignorant ignorant people are running the society and the gurus are considered something outside the society outside the world nobody likes them nobody wants to go to them you see so uh, it it takes initial struggle once you come to know the proper path once you know the proper teachings mm -hmm. then there is no possibility of getting in, into depression there is no possibility of doing anything stupid mm -hmm. there is no possibility of you know becoming a drug addict or uh, becoming a sannyasi or a ghori or something like this you see <laughs> there is no need of extreme measures at all mm -hmm. it is very easy it is very pure and it is very natural spirituality is the most natural state of being okay uh, going back to this question of uh, reality and existence being an illusion or maya if this is not real if this is just an illusion then what about god the creator is god real you see on the, in the non dual philosophies we don't deal with these concepts the concept of the god is given to the people the seekers on the path of devotion like i said they need to devote their life they need to surrender to something which is much bigger than them and for them this these concepts are created that look there is something which is much bigger than you and uh, this human being is a puppet you need to surrender you need to become a servant of this bigger thing and on that path they visualize something and they they devote their life to that thing that is what they call god but on the other path there is no god mm -hmm. uh, these paths are called the atheistic paths mm -hmm. 
So the path of knowledge is totally atheistic path. And the highest reality is your essence. Okay. That which is witnessing the illusion is the only reality here. And there is nothing else. Okay. There's nothing else. Okay, this is very interesting because generally when we talk about spirituality, there is a lot of emphasis given to God that you can't be spiritual without uh, having faith in a God. This is a common thing that I keep hearing, but this is new to me. That is, that will be called religious. Yeah. That will be called religion, not spirituality. Mm -hmm. Spirituality is about finding truth. Mm -hmm. Spirituality is about Finding the spirit. Spirit means the essence, isn't it? Yes. Spirit means that which remains, which cannot be thrown away, that which is not false, that which does not change. And uh, uh, you see, most of the paths are atheistic, except one path. And the problem is that most of the people are not comfortable with the other paths. They are mostly devotional. In our society also, in our country also, as soon as a child is born, he is initiated without his will into some kind of religion, isn't it? Yes. That is called a belief system. He is initiated into a belief system. The beliefs are indoctrined in, in that child. It, look, this is how it is. You need to do this and you need to worship this thing. So the child is, you know, innocent, does not know, simply accepts. And most of the people, like 99% of the people, they spend their lives like this. But there are few people who revolt, who rebel, who can think, you know, independently. And these people are called seekers. And these people find the guru. These people find the path. And then, you know, the option is open to you. you you see, you can have any kind of concept you want. Mm -hmm. You can throw away the concepts and stay with the reality. Mm -hmm. It is your choice. It is your liking. There, there is complete freedom here. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, the uh, real freedom is freedom of the mind. Mm -hmm. Not freedom of the body. You see. Freedom of the mind is the real freedom. Mm -hmm. The yes. body is bound. The body will remain bound. The body will go to dirt. It is, mm. it is not free, but the mind can be made free. Mm. And the best way to free your mind is knowledge. Okay. Know yes. what you're talking about first, first thing you see. Mm. Do not listen to people. These people are kind of source of ignorance, not source of knowledge. Mm. Listen to the guru, listen to the spiritual books, listen to the scriptures. Mm. Okay. Or you know, listen to other seekers. Mm -hmm. so, Not to the general public. The general mm -hmm. public knows nothing really. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. I think it is time to move away from devotion to God, devotion to society, devotion to government, devotion to some political party, devotion to culture. <laughs> time to move away from devotion and find the right path or the right guru. But as you had earl, uh, earlier mentioned, today there is so much misinformation. There are so many fake gurus, fake godmen, or uh, some people are doing it just for money. How can a seeker find the right kind of guru? How can the seeker find a guru? Yeah, the right, the right kind of guru, not the you know the fake guru. There are many ways. Mm -hmm. First, the seeker should. Um, Prepare himself or herself. The, she, the seeker has the right set of qualities, you see. Mm -hmm. If you don't, don't have the right set of qualities, you will always find wrong match. Mm -hmm. uh, the finding a guru is just like finding a partner mm -hmm. for romance. Mm -hmm. It cannot be arranged. It, you cannot buy a guru, you know. Take my money and give me spirituality. Not possible, really. Mm -hmm. Those will be fake gurus. They will do anything for money, isn't it? Mm. Those are not gurus, actually. They are businessmen. Mm. So you prepare yourself. You groom yourself. You cultivate yourself. Mm. And there, there is a long list of qualities, which I mention in many places, actually, in my videos. 
my articles the podcast so right now i'm not going to trouble you with all the detail you know you can always find it uh, if you contact me i'll give you all the details there's a kind of thousands of <laughs> videos and all so uh, uh, when you cultivate the right set of qualities there is a rule in our universe that the guru will appear in front of you mm. okay yeah not only the student is seeking the guru mm. the teacher is seeking the student also the right student mm. so you can call it a miracle you can call it a mystery or you can call it a law but this will happen once you are ready the guru is ready oh. if you are not ready like you are uh, trying to find the happiness or whatever your goal in the world in the material world although there is no such thing but you are lost so the guru will let you go actually he will say okay okay no problem go and live your material life when you're tired of you it you come back uh, because the guru can sense that he is not ready once you are ready which means you have a intense desire for knowledge you have a intense desire for freedom then the guru will embrace you and the guru will never leave you okay so uh, practically speaking you know this is the spiritual mambo jumbo but practically speaking you need to uh, search you keep preparing yourself keep cultivating yourself but uh, parallelly you need to also contact people in the spiritual field so we were just talking about gurus a uh, seeker has to have certain qualities he will have certain qualities and with the right qualities he will find the right guru and you had yes. also mentioned earlier that you have been to uh, some ashrams uh, can you name some good ashrams or the right community where a seeker can go actually if i tell you one ashram there is no guarantee that it will fit your needs if i tell you 10 you will be confused so what i suggest is uh, try to learn what kind of paths are there you know? mm. it is possible to learn it from books also mm. or you can you can come to me those who are interested mm. my all services are free and all are online so mm. we meet regularly online mm. and all this guidance is given because it cannot be one size that will fit all mm. i can tell you two or three ashrams no Mm. like sadguru sadguru koimbedru ashram or rajneesh ashram in pune or something in uh, rishikesh something in uh, nepal or somewhere mm. but there is no guarantee that it is good for you there is no guarantee mm. and same way i can tell you the names of the gurus everybody knows the names of the gurus isn't it but there is no guarantee that they are made for you and you are made for them okay so it is all the custom thing Mm. the search must be done by the seeker and uh, there is a there is always a chance that if i tell something mm. it will waste your time mm. so just like i said you need to do your evaluation what what kind of path you want mm. and the search the ashram which teaches that path mm. okay for uh, the Let audience okay for the audience members who want to contact uh, uh, tarun sir i will uh, put his blog uh, and other uh, you know important links in the description you can please click on it and uh, check uh, sir's blog and other works and one uh, question uh, one more uh, i mean i have few more questions uh, but in your blog i just uh, saw this article called uh, astral projection it's you use it as one of the methods of uh, your spiritual journey can you elaborate on uh, astral projection yes yes you know just like you are witnessing a world right now using your body and senses same way when we sleep in the night we witness another world the dream world using the dream body and dream senses same way it is possible to witness other parts hidden parts of the mind 
using another body and another set of senses. Actually, there are many kinds of these bodies. We call them the layers of the mind, or in Sanskrit, you can call them the kosha or sharir. So, whatever is uh, used to witness these worlds, these experiences, will be called the subtle body or the non physical body, or we say astral body, because that is the traditional name in the occult literature. So, when this experience starts using this kind of body, the non physical body, we call it the astral projection. Because it is simply a projection of uh, your memories. That's all it is. Mm. So the experience starts. And it will look like as if it is real. Just, just like this experience, the current waking state experience, feels as if it is real. But actually, it is also a projection that we come to know only when we get this experience of uh, being in the non-physical body and then there remains no doubt in the mind of the seeker that whatever is being witnessed in the waking state while we are awake in the world is also simply made up is also an illusion is also a dream so uh, why do i recommend because this is the foolproof method mm. like i can tell you intellectually you will be able to grasp very quickly in half an hour that whatever we are witnessing right now is an illusion. It, it is possible to tell any intelligent person, it is possible to show any intelligent person that currently you are witnessing an illusion. This is the characteristic of the path of knowledge that we don't tell, we show. Mm -hmm. We show it in front of your eyes. But some people are not convinced, you see. They say, no, 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 no. This thing is solid. I feel the hunger, I feel the pain, this is real. So what we do, we recommend them this method of astral projection and we show them that, look, it is possible to get the same, exact same uh, experience, which will not be a dream. It will be as real as this, but it will be completely false. It will be complete illusion. So. Uh, this is not path of knowledge, really. The astral projection method is not given in the path of knowledge. That will be the path of occult, tantra, tantra mark. Okay. But because some people have different needs, I teach it also. Mm -hmm. And uh, the only problem there is not everybody can do it. That is the only problem. Oh. I can show you that this is an illusion. Most of the intelligent people will grasp it except those who are like hell bent that know this is this is the truth mm -hmm. those who are completely indoctrined into thinking their beliefs cannot be broken mm -hmm. but anybody who is open minded mm -hmm. will know it but some people they need very solid you know evidence for that we borrow from other paths mm -hmm. we borrow from uh, in the path of energies or like like i said open path Mm -hmm. So this is the method that is recommended to know the illusion firsthand. And not only that, you can create your own illusion. Mm -hmm. You can create your own world. You can create your own body, live happily forever, billions of years. No problem at all. If that is your choice. <laughs> mm -hmm. OK. Uh... You have written so many articles in your blog and you help so many seekers for free. But uh, then how do you sustain yourself? And don't you think maybe you should charge something because you are giving valuable service? Uh, just like I said, that you need to come in spirituality once you are standing on your feet. Otherwise, you will keep asking money from others, and that corrupts the field. Mm. If I take something from somebody, now I am obliged to do what they want me to do. Mm. This is the uh, mm. situation. But a guru needs to be free, you see. So first thing, there is a need for freedom. that I should not depend on somebody for my bread and butter. 
I can stand on my feet. I'm self-reliant. So what I did, I earned a lot of money, yeah. lots of it. And it is more than enough for 20 people here. <laughs> yeah. So once that is done, now I don't need to take money from anybody. You see. Mm. I don't need first thing. Second thing, I want to be self-reliant. I don't want to depend on anybody, especially on the students. Your student is a poor creature, isn't it? <laughs> mm. <laughs> student is just trying to somehow survive, somehow do the job. And those who have families, they already have a lot of burden. Now the guru becomes one more burden on him. Mm. Is it fair? No. You see, if I write a book, then I must charge for it because there is a publishing cost. The book will cost something. If I organize a meeting in a hotel, in an ashram, then you must pay for it. You must pay for the travel. You must pay for the stay. We cannot avoid that. But like we're talking now, isn't it? We're talking. It, it, it is costing me zero. Mm. Now, why should I charge? Mm. And third thing, this is the spiritual knowledge. I got it for free. Mm. Knowledge is our birthright. It should not be charged. Yes, you can charge for the techniques you see yogic techniques, breathing technique, or if you want to make this body fit or something, you see, mm. for that knowledge, you can charge. But how can I charge for telling you who you are? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is that fair? That is not fair. So the basic knowledge or whatever we call the essential knowledge must be given to all. It does not take time. It does not take effort and it does not take money. Mm. So I give it free. Okay. Actually, I do it 24 by 7 nowadays. Mm. I don't have any work. I don't like to do any other work, actually, worldly works. Mm. And so uh, this is the advantage of uh, stabilizing the Mooladhar. Like mm. we call it Mooladhar in the yogic literature. If your base is strong, mm. if your survival is taken care of, then you are free to do whatever you want to do. Mm. Otherwise, you'll keep begging, you'll keep asking for donation, and you will do all kinds of circus to get the money. Mm. And that has corrupted the spiritual field a lot. Now people come here, teach here only for money, mm. which is very bad for spirituality. So I'm trying to purify it by not charging, by not asking anything. I mean, we do not even ask you for visiting any place we do not ask for any kind of service please do this for me no simply giving okay you want something i have it i give it to you mm. this this was our tradition in india and we should bring it back again we should not commercialize at least spirituality should not be commercialized mm. then what is the difference between worldly people and spiritual people if they also exploit others for money, mm. what is the difference? What happens is I give them everything I have plus more. And some students, they say, I'm poor. I give them money also. You can take, take my money if you want. <laughs> and once they become self-reliant, then obviously everybody is ready to help you, isn't it? You have given all your life. Now, any good person will help you back so i i never get you know and i never get into any situation where i am helpless if i want money thousands of people are ready with their whole bank balance mm. for me so we don't feel unsafe by not charging we feel safe by not charging mm. okay and uh, finally, I want to ask, uh, what is the purpose of life? Life has no purpose, actually. It is mm -hmm. blank canvas, blank. Okay. Now, it is your job to fill it with a purpose. Mm -hmm. You are free to assign it any purpose you want. So you should assign it the most beautiful purpose. You are given a blank canvas. Now it is your job to paint a very beautiful picture on it. Just say if you are given purpose and you don't like it, 
let's say <laughs> it will become a burden for you isn't it mm, yes it will become a slavery for you now you must do it even if you don't like it. so mother nature is very kind mm. it has given us no purpose it has told us that you are free to choose your purpose just do it beautifully you know don't damage anything mm. don't cause any kind of violence don't cause any kind of hate live your life beautifully fully perfectly this is my purpose everybody needs to decide their purpose because if you don't decide if you don't walk on your goal you know if you don't walk towards your goal if the path is not coming from your heart it will become a burden it will cause suffering if you do that which you are born to do then you will your life will be fulfilled then you will get the happiness you see not by walking on somebody else's yes. you decide your own absolutely yeah. uh, these were all uh, great answers and i learned a lot in the past uh, one or two hours thank you tarun ji for uh, coming on the labyrinth this was a very valuable conversation thank you very much for inviting me it is my pleasure